it took a little while, but finally it is here. The new Revision 5 Power Shield Board for the Arduino stack. Let's have a look at it. Hello everyone and welcome to the IoTT channel. I am Hans Tanner. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here and thank you for your support of my channel. There are several reasons that bringing out the Revision 5 Power Shield took a little longer than originally planned. First, I had to wait for the line driver chip that suddenly was no longer available. I finally ended up with replacing it by a similar one that was in stock. But, of course, this caused a minor redesign with all the necessary testing, etc. And it happened in a time period when I was pretty busy with moving to our new home and getting the old one ready for the market. On that end, there is good news though. This past week I was finally able to have my new shed building erected, which is going to be the future IoTT lab. Of course, I still need to do a lot of finishing work, but there is light at the end of the tunnel and I finally will be able to move my mess from the office and the garage into the new shed. The lower floor will be dedicated to model railroading, R&D and testing for the IoT stick and the various hats. And in the upper floor there is enough space to set up my green screen and film the videos. With a little luck I will also get a new microphone so that the sound quality of my videos can be improved. I know we are waiting for that. So here it is, the Revision 5B Power Shield and it is available in the TV store in limited quantities for the moment, but there's more coming. Looking at the board we see basically the same elements like on the Revision 4 board. It is using the standard Arduino form factor, so it fits either on an Arduino Uno or an Arduino Mega. On the right side are the power connectors, the DC connector to connect the power supply at the lower end and the DC track connector. Of course the plugs are included and shipped with the board. Next to it are the two H-Bridge driver chips. As before, I am using the BTS 7960, which is capable to handle up to 43 amps of peak current. The maximum voltage it is designed for is 28 volts. On the left side of the board, there is an additional DCC output terminal block, which can be used to connect the power shield to a Red Hat shield or to a nearby track, for example, if you use the power shield for service mode decoder programming. If track power is on, this is indicated by the onboard LED. As before, it is a bicolor LED, so if you use the power shield to output DC, it comes up either red or green, depending on the polarity. And for DCC, it illuminates in sort of a yellowish green as both LEDs are on at the same time. To configure the power shield for your application, there are four jumper fields you can use. The first one is a three pole pin header, which has the pins and jumper already soldered and installed when shipped. The purpose of this jumper is to select whether you want to operate the power shield using two or only one DCC input signal. Place the jumper close to the Arduino pin header to drive the power shield from one single input pin and the second half of the DCC signal generated internally. This is the typical configuration when using the power shield in a DCC X command station stack. DCC-X in the default configuration supplies the DCC signal on a single pin, which is then used to generate DCC-A and DCC-B on the power shield board. When using the power shield as an external booster, like the silver hat, just place the jumper in the other position to tell the board to expect the two parts of the DCC signal on individual pins. This allows for an exact replication of the incoming DCC signal, including short signal breaks as needed, for example, for train identification using Railcom. 
adjacent to the signal selector jumper is a 3 by 3 pin configuration field for selecting the analog input pin for current measurement. The sensor input is provided on the pinholes on the white bar and you can bridge from there to any of the analog inputs A0 to A6 to feed the signal to the corresponding Arduino analog pin. The large jumper field to the left is for selecting the input pins. The white bars are the signals of the power shield board. From the bottom they are labeled power, brake, PWM1, PWM2 and AR. These signal names correspond to the names used in the DCC-X configuration, so setting up the shield should be easy. For a standard configuration you need to connect power and PWM1. If you want to use the DC feature of DCC-X, you also need to connect the brake pin. To connect the pin, you just create a bridge between the white signal bar and the adjacent soldering eye. On one side of each white bar, you find the holes for GPIOs 2 to 7. On the other side, you have GPIOs 8 to 13. To connect a particular I.O., you can either install pins and use a jumper, or simply solder in a wire bridge. To install jumper pins, it is best to place the pins, then place a small board, maybe with double-sided tape on it, turn it around and solder the bottom side. This way, the pins cannot move or fall out while soldering them. When using the power shield in a silver head booster, you need to connect pins 2 and 3 to PWM1 and PWM2 as both parts of the DC signal are needed and are available on these two pins. You also need to connect power, but brake remains open. If you want to use the auto-reversing feature of the silver head, you need to connect the AR input to one of the pins as well. This allows the booster to reverse the polarity of the track output, for example, when the train goes through a reversing loop. The final jumper is for connecting the DC input of the power shield to V-in of the Arduino. If connected, you can use a single DC power supply to power the entire Arduino stack from the power shield. Note that the input voltage should not exceed 18 volts and in order to protect the Arduino, you also need to use a DCC aux shield. In case you use more than one power shield in your Arduino stack, you should only configure one of them to supply the Arduino V-in rail. If you are using DCC-X, you also need to configure your command station software for the power shield. There are some instructions on the DCC-X webpage that cover the details. The relevant settings are in the motordrivers.h file. You can create a new entry for the power shield or recycle an existing one. If you create a new entry, you also need to change the selected motor driver in config.h so that your new definition is being used. Define a separate line for each power shield and specify the power, PWM and analog pin. If you want to make use of the DC features of DCCX, you also need to specify the brake pin. If not, you can set the parameter to unused pin. The sensor amplification value for the power shield revision 5B needs to be set to 12.207 to allow for the correct measurement of the trip current. The value is actually printed on the back of the board and is valid for the 10-bit analog digital converter running on a 5-volt board, as this is the case on the Arduino. The trip current finally can be set to any current value up to 8000 milliamps, but you need to make sure that your power supply actually can deliver the specified trip current even when loaded. I plan on doing a separate video on the topic of short circuit current in the near future including a test of some of the more popular power supplies along with more detailed information on the Silverhead booster. So stay tuned for that and subscribe to the IoTT channel if you don't want to miss it when that video comes out. 
OK, when done with the configuration, save the file and upload the sketch to your Arduino and you are ready to go. If you are using the power shield for a silver head booster, it is even easier as there is no need for configuration in the sketch. Everything can be done using the setup screen either on the IoTT stick via Wi-Fi or via USB connection using the serial configuration tool. See video number 136 for more information. And that's it for today. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you have all the information you need to use the power shield either in your DCCX stack or in a Silverhead booster. If so, please click the like button below to let me know or leave me a comment in the comment section of this video. Doing so keeps me motivated and helps to promote this video to other model railroaders as well. Because, as you know, YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.